all you monkeys out there, and boy, is it early. Look at that. The sun's just barely coming up. Uh, check it out. It's been a long, hard winter, and uh, we haven't been able to get out very much and go see some cars, so that's what we're doing. We're talking about a road trip. We're going to be on the road for about three or four days, heading out to Alabama. I got two big nests picked out, one down near Montgomery and one uh, north of Birmingham. It's going to be pretty wicked because the big one down uh, in Montgomery is absolutely wicked. I've only seen pictures, but I'm really stoked about it. Uh, I mean, things from the 1800s all the way up to, you know, who knows, the 1980s. Uh, super cool old cat that owns these cars and uh, trucks and vans and just wait till you see it, okay? You're gonna love it. And then the one little north of there is uh, pretty cool. We've got about six or eight vehicles. We're gonna try to buy all at the same time, stick them on a truck and get them back down here to uh, Dallas. So there you go. That's what we're doing. Monkeys back on the road doing what we do best. We're gonna have some fun and take you along for the ride. And check this out. We're going from Dallas, basically to Montgomery, Alabama. If you know something cool that we need to see, you know, like the world's biggest ball of yarn or the whale that swims in a child's pool or the, the hamburger that's like this big that you have to eat in like 12 minutes or something. I want to do some crazy Americana stuff. So send us your ideas and tell us what's up. If you got some cool cars, send us those too. And, uh, you know, look for us on the road because we'll be traveling in a big black sprinter. Yeah, and before you think I'm too bougie and all that, you know, that I've lost my way, you would travel in a big ass nice sprinter if you had one too. So get you some. coming through Shreveport, it's Tubbs Cajun Souvenirs. Now they got king cake, they got beads, they got all kinds of things. So if you're coming through Louisiana on your way to Mardi Gras or whatever, the beads and all that stuff's super expensive as you get down to New Orleans, because obviously it's New Orleans. So buy them up here on the cheap. Let's go see what they got. I wonder if they have some alligator I can eat. I hear it tastes like chicken. Yeah, we got some beads. Need some of that. Why don't they have like those big, where? Don't you have like those big bags of beads? Everything's up here. Oh, here we go. Now we're talking. Cases and everything. Yeah, Oh yeah. Now we're jamming. Does anybody need an alligator hat? I think Chase does. No way, man. <laughs> he needs a new hat. Should we get some beads? I don't know. Which ones are cool beads? Any of them. Look, you got to look at the ends of them. Look at this little guy. You know, like these random ones with the baby. Oh, the baby one's cool. Yeah, you got to just get like the cool ones. You don't need the whole bag. Why not? Like, look at this. We have some with the motorcycles on them somewhere. We don't need a bag of beads? I say get the cool one. Okay. Look at that, motorcycles. There you go. And pirates and stuff. Some with Viagra on it. I don't need any Viagra. <laughs> I hadn't hit that point yet, man. <laughs> hey, hey, you were the first one to notice me, so uh, we got your picture a second ago with you. Oh, so thank you. Here's a shirt. I appreciate it. I love it. What about a mask? Do I need a mask? I think you do. No, I don't I think, think so. For you. These Mr. are two. Uh, Richard, our store owner wants to meet you. He's on his way here. Could you? Well, how long is that going to be? He said about thirty minutes. Oh, we'll I can't wait to that break long. His neck to get I can't you. wait that long, man. Oh, we're, man. we're trying to get to Alabama. I wish I could. Hey, you I get really do. Good crawfish. The crawfish. Yeah, the red one. Well, let okay. me call him and tell him. Yeah, tell him I'm real sorry, but I we just uh, doing some uh, quick stops and getting on the road. Oh. Maybe I need a koozie. What made you come by uh, Tubbs? 
We were looking for cool uh, Mardi Gras stuff, and uh, this okay. was this was the place that came up on the old Google. Oh uh, yeah, well, awesome. Well, listen, let me give you some king cakes. Um, how many people are in your posse? Just four. Just four, but are you going to Alabama where there's a lot of people? We're going to Alabama to buy some cars. We're looking at two different uh, two different collections, but uh, well, you know, one king well, cake. Why don't, you, why don't you bribe them, romance them with some king cakes? So, Sam, won't you give them, like, four king cakes? Okay. I'll yeah, that'd be that. fine. I'll do that. Well, or you can use them. Hey, man, can you lower the price if we give you a Louisiana king cake, you know? And what is king cake? I like, like the way you're thinking. The, the dialogue you can have with them. Uh, I, I like the way you're thinking. Okay, buddy. Well, thank you so much. And uh, I am sick that I'm not there, but uh look forward to seeing you one day in the future. All righty, sir. Thank you very much. Sam, give me my salad in case you have a to do that in the future. I know, okay, I'm getting this. I sure this. will. Thank hey, you. thank you, sir. Put it on the dash. Or we could just go fly real big. How much is the big one? 170 bucks. Yeah, I don't want to pay 170 It seems like we need to be like the hour head in the... Alligator head business. I think we'll just get into the small alligator head. Come on, alligator dude. Anything else for you, my friend? Uh, no, man, that's good. I think we're in good shape now. Give you this uh, Tubbs barbecue sauce. So if you like it, you'll come back. All right, we'll try it. <laughs> It's 10607. You. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank Did he say that uh, some of you guys wanted to get some pictures or whatever? Uh, yeah. Let's light it up. We'll take some pictures and get cray. King cake. King cakes it is. Are they frozen? Yes. Okay. <laughs> It's a little bit better for trans transport if you wrap this over. No, we're going to stick him on the dash. Oh my goodness. What? Oh my goodness, I'm Travis White with the White Boy Industries LLC. I do a lot of lawn and landscape work. How's it going? I've never been it's introduced that way before. Well, I'm Travis White, the only black guy you know with a white last name. It's a pleasure meeting you. I got a 72. <laughs> I got a 72 you can carry back to Dallas with you right up 20 right now. Nah, man, no, nah, oh, we're, we're man. going the other way, man. Oh, we're going the other way. Be selling me a mower. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Look at this. This is bad. Cajun dill gator taters. <laughs> hey there, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Right on. It's nice to meet you. Well, let's do it. All right. There Thank we go. You. We have now seen Tubbs Cajun gifts. And we have some king cakes. Yeah. You got a shirt. shirt. Thank you. Things are going good for everyone today. <laughs> we appreciate you coming by. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Y'all be, be careful, girl. Thank Next you. stop, Jackson, Mississippi. All right. All right, here we go. Alligator head. Get out the way, millennials. Here we are, crossing the mighty Mississippi, the Ole Miss. This is uh, America's version of the Nile, but uh, was a major piece of uh, commerce back in the day. I'm sure it still does do some, but. Uh, other than that, it's just the Mississippi River. That means we're moving into Mississippi. M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. -S -S I learned that one. I learned that when I was a kid. So, uh, two states down, one to go. I guess we would be called uh, eastbound and down. Ah, that's it. We are eastbound and down. All right, so we got to Birmingham without incident. Uh, I got to uh, stop and uh, see the Mardi Gras store, which was pretty, uh, yeah, it was Mardi Gras, you know? So we got some cakes. Uh, the people were real nice to us. And uh, we're in Birmingham, gonna grab some dinner, get some sleep, because in the morning we're gonna go look at the first nest, which is, I think, like anywhere between six and 10 vehicles, uh, and try to get those bought. Stay tuned, it's gonna be fun. 
And as for now, we're out of the vehicle and cold beer is always nice. Hey, get my luggage, millennials. What's up, what's up? So it was a beautiful night last night. We had a nice uh, steak dinner, just literally walking distance from here. And uh, now we're up. Uh, it's, I, I don't know if it's still late at night or if it's early in the morning to tell you the truth, but uh, the gentleman we're going to see said, uh, be there at 7 a.m. So that's what we're gonna do after I go get some pancakes and waffles. Like I said, it's time for a little breakfast. Gotta go in the Waffle House. You know what they say in the Waffle House? Morning. There's people in there. I mean, I know they're working, but the Waffle Ooh. House ain't open. What? I need to really get that fucking generator going. Why? Fuck, maybe not. What's going on now? Nothing. It's had more, way more voltage than it's ever had in a long time. Man, the no. generator ain't working. The Waffle House ain't open. Some fucking bullshit. We'll try it when we're rolling. <laughs> where are we going? I have no idea where we're going. You know? I mean, I think the Waffle House will be open in any minute, but if they close right now, then it ain't open until 7, is it? Probably not. Because it's uh, 6 30. I thought Waffle House was open at like 24 hours yeah, a day. I thought they were too. That's where you always go when you're all fucked up. I don't go anywhere when I'm all messed up. I go to bed. Oh, I didn't say you. I just said that's where you go because it's. Always open. Man, Cracker Barrel ain't open. What kind of bullshit town is this? <laughs> this ain't no city. I swear the Waffle Houses are always open. Taco motherfucking Bell is open. Waffle House ain't open. All right, so here's my problem is um, I'm sitting over here in the passenger seat watching the world go by, and uh, I thought we were going to see the... Uh, six or so car collection first but uh instead we're here at not even well right at 7 a.m to look at the 40 car collection uh this uh gentleman mr kershaw uh and his father started a business in the 1800s i think um or or early early 1900s and uh in the train industry they they made things that fixed train tracks or any problems uh, in that industry. Uh, super huge, uh, big benefactor to the city of uh, Montgomery. Uh, and he, over time, collected cars and uh, sold his company and what have you. So we're fixing to go in and check out uh, the entire collection. Um, this should be interesting. I really hope the sun comes out because it looks dark in there. It's very dark in there. Yeah, it looks really dark in there. But at the end of the day, uh, we're gonna check out these cars, uh, try to make a deal, and then we're gonna uh, bust on through to uh, wherever the next place is. Yes. Fucking building rats. So uh, it's super early in the morning. Uh, Mr. Kershaw uh, is here uh, with another family member and we're gonna check out the collection. This building itself, just from the outside, is absolutely amazing. Uh, some of these cars I haven't seen the light of day in a very, very long time. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, uh, Mr. Kershaw here in Montgomery, Alabama, uh, is a very recognized family. Uh, like they've done so much for this city it's amazing and so we have to tread a little lightly uh kind of take a look at everything and see if we can get some things bought but i mean they've got everything from entire locomotives in here to train stuff to car stuff to motorcycle stuff you name it this should be cool let's go check it out all right let's go well we didn't exactly get a good day did we mr kershaw not exactly not <laughs> the done. best yes sir yeah, right on We'll uh, 
at the end of the day, I could literally move into a building. Like I could just put a bed over there, and I would be happy as a clam. <laughs> I just, I just love old buildings and 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 cool stuff like this. So this is a pretty, uh, pretty massive collection that, uh, that I guess you've uh, acquired over the years. And that's right. I guess my dad started. I know I'd be in the fifties, uh, and in this area, there just weren't any old car enthusiast and he would literally get calls from people and they'd say uh, I have this old car in my barn or my garage and several of the cars he inquired he just he couldn't see them go to the scrapyard so so we had a couple of Lincolns right there like uh, those are Mark two and threes Mark three and four three, three and four. four that's close this is a Mark I guess the 48 is a Mark one or the 41 well, this is a coupe, a uh, 48 coupe, which yeah. is uh, kind of rare. Um, not super, you know, popular. A lot of people didn't keep them because uh, uh, the, of the maintenance issues they had with this. And uh, this is a Zephyr coupe. No, it's a 41 Continental. This is? I would have thought this was a Mercury Zephyr. Most people associate the grill with the Zephyr, but the 41 Lincoln, they built the Continental with the same grill. Yes, sir. Okay. That That's Continental's like, seen better days. It has. It's a 62 convert, four-door convertible. You know, it's another car that it'd probably be parted out and scrapped if it wasn't for the fact that it's a four-door convertible. Yeah, it's a, it's you very know. popular. Now, this one caught my eye when I came through a second ago. This is a, a V12 Lincoln sedan. Yeah, it's, a, it's really called a limousine. It's got um, jump seats, so it'll just, it was seven passenger uh, limousine. The seats fold up in the front. So this would have been, what is this, 37, 38? 37. Yeah. That's really, really neat. Now these are too new for me. I don't even know well, what those they're are. Not, they're not really. Uh, uh, this is an Audi, uh, a V8 Audi that was built in the 60s. It's and then a, uh, that's a full train car right there. Yeah, we were in the railway business and uh, I had a, a tenant here who restored old railway cars and usually converted them into diners or some sort of a tourist vehicle. Yes, sir. Now that's pretty interesting. That's a 59 limo. That's correct. This was, uh, this, this car was purchased by the state of Alabama by the governor in 58 and there were six out of six governors that actually that was their vehicle. Uh, both Governor Folsom and of course Governor Patterson and Wallace, both Wallaces used it. But uh, it was basically, that was the, the choice of a vehicle for a governor. And of course, of course they, they went away and everybody went to Suburbans. Well, I get it, but I mean, uh... You know that's a that's a pretty cool ride um, being a '59. You yeah. know the '59 Cadillacs are so iconic that yeah, it is. Uh, it's just it, insane. '59 was known as the height of the tail fin era. But I, that, that was our highest the tail fin guide was on the '59 Cadillac. Absolutely. You know the, the the whole tail fin thing with the '59 Cadillacs and the Galaxies from Ford and everything. It was because we were in this space race, right. and everybody wanted everything to kind of look like a spaceship. It was pretty crazy. Exactly. Uh, looks like you got a '32 Ford here. Now this one looks like it already has a, a Mustang II suspension in the yeah. front. This this car is not finished. It's a. Uh, original steel body that I had it was a teenager and I found and you know still you had this as a teenager well no it was yeah it was just stock okay and then I cut it up made hot rods out of it and the only thing I had left that was any worth anything was the actual body so 
Road, uh, Road, uh, Brookville Roast, the, you know, from the chassis. new chassis, okay. new steel fenders, but it's all built around the original. Uh, uh, did we cut this down? Is this no? Me? It's not it's, chopped. It's, it's, it's not. Standard. Sometimes I can't tell, especially in this light. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm a big early Ford guy. I have, uh, I have roadsters from 1930 all the way to 1936. Right. I have a 34 roadster that uh, I'm the, I'm the third owner of, and it's a hundred percent original. It's it's really really neat, neat car. And we got a Thunderbird here. Yeah, it's just a six, 60 Thunderbird. Now, this is a little Ford Business Coupe, isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, been hot rodded. Uh, now, Fitz's dad is a sedan. It's got a, you know, a, uh, front suspension, um, you know, the clip, clip on it, and a 351 uh, Windsor motor. It's a neat little car. It um, is. It's, it's a, we have one at the shop. Oh, we that, always like these business coupes. Oh, yeah. yeah they, We've got one at the shop that uh, has never left the neighborhood since it was sold wow. new. And uh, back in the in the fifties, uh, they they made what they called Fordalacs. Remember, they took put the Cadillac motor, three thirty one Cadillac motor in it with the overdrive uh, pull transmission. And uh, so we have one at our shop that's never, literally, never left the neighborhood. It's it's been there. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of the guys that works for me, uh, Phipps. His mom, his dad took his mom to the hospital to deliver him in that car. And uh, it just, it, it, I don't think it's ever traveled more than 20 miles away from where it's always been. But it's a neat, neat car. Now this is an early Oldsmobile. Is this first year? That's the first year of the Tornado. And my, my dad purchased this car New. That is really you know, cool. One owner, I guess you would call it. Look at that flat floorboard. You yeah. guys got to see this. Yeah, that's what was so unique about it. Well, yeah, the, the motor and training and everything's back. up there. Yeah. And everything back here just rolls along with it. Very understated cars, uh, as far as I'm concerned. This should have been the future of automobiles. And why they went back to a drivetrain that goes all the way through the car, I'll never understand. Yeah, you're right. Uh, I mean, this this was so far above its time. I mean, look at the fender wells, and the way they they they've got the the sides poking out. You could just man, that's a good looking car. So these are these are early teens. Right. You know, it would. Uh, my dad started a collection. He was looking for for uh, two cars that his family were the first cars they owned. And the first car was a 1989 EMF 30. And this car he found is 1911. But um, he, he was he, he was 12 years old then and learned to drive these cars. And so after he found that, he, he just, just basically for sentimental reasons, the other car is a 13 Cadillac, which we see over here. But uh, that's how he started the collection, trying to find the two cars that he remembered as a growing up. And he, you know, they lived in North Alabama, and they lived before we really had cars. And 19, you know, it was 1919 and 10 that people started having Model Ts or, but. Uh, well, Model Ts, not much better than a tractor really <laughs> it's just the same thing right. what is the is that a t over there yeah that's 0907 and that's the first year of the t really that's super cool i gotta tell you this is an amazing amazing uh, selection of stuff now uh, i read something about this vehicle um somewhere when i was doing my research this uh is all aircraft aluminum and, and tell me about this thing well this started a family vacation that we took in 49 my dad bought a new 
Ford station wagon. Okay. And we were going from here to Yellowstone Park. And as we drove every day, he had the idea of a, really a motor home. And we started sketching, and then later on, came back and, and designed this vehicle as a, it was really a mini motor home uh, to, to make family trips or business trips. Uh, and this was in 1962, when this is built, it's got a 62, Ford Econoline front end. It does. And then I remember these trucks. It into a, a, a custom built body. It kind of looks like an Airstream with a, a flexible van. Uh, it's up. And it has. Wow, a, it's got a kitchen and, and kitchen everything. And a bathroom. That is really, really cool. You know, I, I recognize the, the Ford front end because uh, when I was only 18 years old, I, I was working for the beer company in, uh, in uh, Fort Worth, and I was delivering uh, uh, beer every day to bars and restaurants and what have you, uh, and we had the, the Ford front end like that. So your dad was really like, if he wanted something, he just kind of said, well, that's what I want, huh? This was a, uh, he had planned to go in production on this, and we were very close to a deal with a, a school bus manufacturer to make the rear body. But, uh, but does it, this was really, this was before Winnebago, right. before any RV vehicles were out there. But it's, you know, obviously they were, he printed a brochure and mailed it out to about 2,000 people, you know, and started getting all this interest. And of course, a lot more people, a lot of people were thinking about the same thing. Well, I got a, I, I had a, a, a very rare RV thing. Um, I bought two of them, um, I don't know, six or eight years. They were called the Camelot Cruisers. And they did kind of the same thing with the Ford front end, uh, but it was just the, the, the puller. And then the back looked like a regular um, box car, if you will, right. but it was decked out with, uh, it, underneath it had boats on one of them, on the other ones it had, I don't even know, it, 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 places for horses. And then up top you had a full blown bedrooms and yeah. kitchen and shag carpet and what have you. Are those uh, Diamond T's over there, or? No, those are 41 Dodge. Okay. Dodges, okay. They kind of resemble the old uh, Diamond T's. Yeah, they look really close to a Diamond T. Yeah, one of the first railway machines my dad built, he used a four-wheel drive Dodge truck and this is a replica of over here of that first prototype. Uh, one of our guys built it, but it was a, a machine that could run on the railroad track, you know, place the rubber tires and, and form the railway, the ballast or the stone. So uh, it's kind of a, uh, we put it together. That's way, really way cool. back in there. That's super cool. I think those this are is kind of old. One of the things you see on some of rail the car wheels. Back in the day, that's how they got them on and off. Yeah. It works. You just have to get it started, but uh, it just it takes really four four guys to, to bump it. But it's a uh, you know built in the 1880s. That's a big chassis. What is that? That's a 26 Cadillac. Wow. It's a car that was somebody started and like a lot, a lot of cars didn't, didn't finish it. And Trust me, I know that. And end up in pieces. <laughs> yes, sir. I understand that completely. So when this building was up and running as the family business, how many employees do you think you had in here? Uh, I mean, one time we had about 300. Wow. I mean, we, were, we were running in the shop, two shifts in the machine shop and fab shop, and then assembly went on one shift. That's really cool. 
Okay, so one of the things that made me come out here was the Pantera. Um, this is really, really cool, and it's an early model with the chrome bumpers and uh, what have you. Looks like it's had some hail damage. Well, no, it's never had hail. I don't know. I was just a little uh, pimples. And, you know, there's you know people standing here yeah, like this. Well, but, but it's, you know, it's original, and it, I've just kind of avoided fixing little things because you know, some people will do a complete restoration. Oh, I don't and like complete no restorations right personally. I yeah. like to keep them uh, original and running. Right. So, how long have you had this car? Well, I, I purchased it new. You did? Mm -hmm. No kidding. Yeah. So that would have been since the seventy-one. Seventy-one. Yeah. That's super cool. I was only two years old. <laughs> well, three maybe. And then these, I see a few of these things around with the... Well, these are, these are railway cars, they call them speeders, or the railway personnel used to use them to inspect the track. So they just go flying down the track and make sure everything's all right? Right. This is a little uh, 56 or 7, 55? 55. Automatic. Carbureted, not a fuely. This this car, my dad purchased it new. It was the first D bird in the Atlanta district. That's super cool. Now this is a, a, a Galaxy. Looks like. Yeah, it's a sixty-three Galaxy. That's right like here. a twenty-eight or twenty-nine Model A. Twenty-nine. This is a, Who purchased that? Now? I, I did. Huh? I did. I was 14 years old and it was for sale for $75. And $75? And, oh, wow. <laughs> and my dad finally let me buy it. And it was the fifth first car I ever owned. Really? So, yeah. That is so freaking cool. I mean, I, I, I really, it tricks my trigger when I get to you know, know the history of things because I, I've, I've been buying and selling cars since I was like 12. Uh, I had a newspaper route uh, in my neighborhood and so I knew where all the cars were. And then on the weekends, I would go knock on people's door to collect the $2 for the monthly paper. And I'd be like, hey, what about that Model A? Or what about that Trans Am? Or what about that Camaro? And they're like, how do you know what I got? And I'm like, I drive down your street twice a day. I don't know where everything is. So I was able to buy a lot of cars. Now this one I read about, this has actually been written up in, in Hemmings. Um, this was uh, Glenn Prey, right? Out of That's Oklahoma. Right. That's right. Now he was really famous for building the Auburns uh, yeah. and what have you. But this is a total fiberglass body, right? Exactly. Uh, my dad, because we built that other vehicle and we decided, well, we, we, we've gotten into a corporate aircraft, so we really need something as an alternative to uh, just a pumped up van. You know, they had the roof raised or, or a seven passenger limo, something that would have an interior like a corporate jet or, you know, kind of a conference type seating. And then, of course, can I get in? Yeah. Oh, this is so cool. So, he built this to be uh, well, very comfortable. Everybody could talk. And right. It's a limo type vehicle, but it was not, uh, you know, it had some style. It didn't look like a converted van. And uh, of course, he had, he had just purchased the Tornado. And when he, you know, because of the flat floor, he said, this is the perfect platform because you know, you get the floor down and keep the, everything lower. That makes complete sense. And uh, <clears throat> your dad was a very smart <laughs> dude because, you know, even today we still have real wheel drive with the drive shaft and the hump and you got to yeah, crawl all over it. Right. And in here, you're just in it. This is freaking cool. It really is neat. I mean, 
What is this drag car thing looking here? Oh, this was, uh, I built this uh, in the 60s. Yeah, I watched all the dune buggies out in California. And I saw one just like this in Hot Rod Magazine. And down in the, on the Gulf Coast, we have some, some dune areas then that you could yes, sir. get on. And so I built this and enjoyed it for about a year and a half before they said no more riding on the dunes. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> You got your skid plate back here with a shock? How many wheelies did you do in this? I did a lot. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> that is so cool. What is that motor? Is that a... a it's a Ford, uh, 289 Ford. Yeah, okay. That is really, really cool. And what's the green car here? We got another Cadillac, uh, similar yeah. to the one over there? Yeah, it's a 1913. So same car? Same, same model. This one's in a little better shape. Yeah, it was. Re we restored it back in the '60s. Yes, sir. And so it's it shows age from that, but it's it's been stored for several years, and I'm just trying to get it going again. But uh, really cool. This is a pretty rare Ford. Yeah, it's a uh, 390 automatic. Had factory air. It was a uh, you know a kind of a salesman's car, but it was you know the the base Fairlane 500. Yeah, but it's cool. You know, it's black on black and be way cool if it was a four door or a four speed. All right, so you have a whole train in here. So is this as it would have been? Well, it's a. Uh, it's been a project for many years, but it's uh, been restored to operating condition. And uh, it would run on, on like tourist railways or railways where they wanted to yes, provide a ride. You know, and with a live steam engine. There's just nothing, nothing like it, but. How many of these are still out there running? Well, not many. Uh, there, are, there are quite a few that have been restored in the last few years, but maybe 20. Holy cow. So what year is this? 1913. 1913. Wow. Man, look at that craftsmanship. I mean, just the size of the rivets and everything know, you chase. That's crazy. rad. That is really, really cool. Unbelievable stuff you got here, sir. Really, really nice. What is this, some kind of fast track attack sub? Well, this is a, a miniature train. It was built back in the 50s and 60s. Amusement parks bought these uh, zoos. You know, and, and the uh, guy would sit in there and drive the kids uh, around in the other cars. That's really pretty cool. This is an amazing, amazing place. The building, the the history, the everything. I mean, the fact that you bought a Pantera brand new and you, you know, you bought that Model A for 75 bucks and your dad engineered a front wheel drive, you know, uh, people mover service car type thing. It's just unbelievable. Are you ready to sell all this stuff? Well, you know, I am, but I guess it's just, we have to see where we are. Some of it, some of it I'm like, keep a little longer, but I just need to uh, slim down. I understand. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the one thing you got to worry about is somebody coming in and taking the good stuff and leaving the bad stuff. <laughs> then you got, then, then not only are you slim, you're, you don't have any cool stuff, but uh, all, right. all right, we'll take a break for a second, okay. sir. Very okay. nice. Yes, sir. All right. Wow. Really? really cool collection i mean unbelievable that uh the family's kept this stuff for as long as they have you know and and had it i mean when you're talking about buying you know 55 t-birds and 71 panteras brand new and you know 
1913 Cadillacs having several of them, things like that. It's really amazing. There's just so much. So it's like, so every time like you walk past, you walking down the road and you've already walked past that way and you turn back the other way, you see something else. Like there's probably 12, 13 engine blocks back there, just Cadillac, uh, Thunderbird, just engines. I'm like, what are they? And they're all look like they're in running condition. So it's, I don't know why they're all pulled out, but there's just more and more stuff. You see the old bike? Uh, yeah. Mr. Kershaw seems uh, like super on his game. He knows everything that's going on and knows where the cars were, where they came from, why the family has them, how long they've had them, et cetera, and so forth. Um, you know, that's going to be, you know, the, the hard part is, is getting this stuff bought. Um, we're not in the business of coming out and, and, and uh, you know, like trying to beat old people down for their vehicles or whatever. We just want to tell the good story. And, and this is, is amazing. I mean, what his family has done for this town uh, over the years and their prosperity uh, that they gave back to the city is, is a pretty cool thing. Uh, so we'll see if we can't get something bought. I'd like to buy it all, including the building. I'd like to buy the land and, and all of it. I've never owned a train. I think I need to own a train. Can you get that thing running? Uh, I think that's a little bit above my pay grade, but <laughs> well, yeah, I can try. Cool, I'll give you a raise, let's do it. <laughs> I'm, I'm down for that. <laughs>
All right, so 25? Yeah. That's a deal. Okay. We just made a deal. We got one deal done. 25 grand on that. Now, what do you want on the fair lane? Pretty clean old car. It is. Kind of fun. 19. I couldn't do that. I could do 12. Because I think it's going to bring around 15. That's what I was thinking of. Oh, I'd do 15. How's it underneath? It's fair. Huh? It's fair. Fair or bad? No, it's, it's good. It's fair. It's an AC car. Yeah. Oh, it's fine. He doesn't have to start it. It's fine. I still need to be at 12 on that. No, oh, he can start that car if you want to. Huh? He can start it. No, it's all right. I trust you. It's straight. It's a nice looking car. It is. Pantera? How many miles has it got on it? Like 10,000. All original? Mm -hmm. Yep. You want to take 75 grand for that? Was that a yes? I'm thinking. What, now, you said 20 on this one, too. And this one kind of tricks my trigger because I think it's kind of neat. And it'll run? Yeah, the, fish, the fuel tank. It's out, it was a limited fuel tank. It has holes in it. They took it out here. That's the only thing somebody walked off with. So it's got a, I had a price for like $600 to make a new, you know, a tank that fits it. Yeah, tank here. could I buy that for 10? No. It's cool, no. but it needs everything. Well. Okay, so we got a deal on the Tornado front wheel drive thing, that's cool. Now, what about the little Ford? Uh, what did I say, honey? I think you said 12. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of this. I think I said uh, 19, but... What about the 66 Tornado? I think they're all about the same to me. They all have titles, right? Oh, you don't have to have a title either. Not until 70s, 70s. Yeah, so the bill of sale's fine. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, we take 13 for the Tornado? No. 15? No. 17. 17's a deal. Now we got two bought. Two. Because I like that. I like the color combination on it. And it's a one-year body style, so it's, it's really cool. It is. It's a good car. It's a great car. And it runs? Yeah. All right. We're working on it. It needs a water pump. Uh, is it ha is that old enough to have the old uh, lead packing you used to have to put into the water pump or not? I don't know. That might have been a little bit earlier. Tom's been working on it. <laughs> but it was running. What about the, 32? I'm going to have to think about that. I've got somebody ready to paint it for me finally. And upholstery. Well, I'll paint it for you. Okay. And upholstery it. But it'd be mine. <laughs> Got the Tornado uh, RV thing for 25 grand, and we got this Tornado for 17. And I like the little Ford. You said 19 on that. How about 15? 17. Okay, 17 on the Ford. That's a deal. I'm I'm from Texas. I do that kind of stuff. What about the black Lincoln here? 69. I'm all on that. Huh? I'm holding on that. You're holding? Yeah. Okay. I get it. It is cool. Well, how much you give me order? Huh? You put a number on it. I think it's worth about five grand. <laughs> <laughs> They're just weird that way. You got to find somebody that wants one. Now, this one I kind of like. Well, you, this car, I don't know what you do. I just get it running. Get it running. And you keep it stock. Yeah, yeah, I get it running, keep it stock, lower it down a little bit, get it a little sinister looking, 
I think that's worth 10 grand. It's four door sedan. Nobody wants those. Oh. Maybe 15. Okay. 15,000 on that one, sir. Okay. But he has to put the tire and everything okay. on and make it roll. Okay. So I can have my driver come. Well, sir, I, don't, I guess that's it. Okay. How about the Pantera at 75? I know. I'll think about it, but... And I don't know what to do with the train. I would sure as hell would like to own one, but I don't know how I'd even move it. We're still on the fence on the Ford Fairlane for 12. Well, we gotta come up with that. Yeah, I get it. I can't do that. Um, if, if I can offer this, I know you probably won't take it, but I just will. Um, the billeting and everything included, uh, not the new cars and stuff that obviously somebody's driving and stuff, but the building and basically all the old cars and contents and trains and everything else. One million. Mm -hmm. I don't have to think about that. Okay. But I'd go just one million flat out, everything, and be done. Motorcycle, Cadillac. Oh, what do you want for the old Cadillac? I don't know yet. I don't know yet either. I just got it out of... I got to do some research on that. That's well, that's way out of my league. I don't even know. Well, me too. Well, what I'm going to do is uh, I'll uh, get the information, wire you the money. You got a good day. We both had a good day, sir. And it's only uh, 9.20 in the morning. Right. What am I doing up? I know. Yeah, it's only 9.20. Nothing's a deal till there's money on the table. There's a thousand dollar down payment for our seventy-four thousand dollar deal. The Tornado RV, Tornado over there, uh, the Ford, and uh, Which Ford? the Lincoln. Which Ford? The little coupe. Coupe. Yeah. Seventeen on the Tornado. Seventeen on Tornado. Twenty-five on that, and fifteen on that. I need to write that down. Well, let's write it down. I got a, what I can do is I got some tape in the truck and I can go on the windshield and write the price on the windshield. Okay. If that works for you. Yeah. Let's do that. And we got a little down payment. We're good. Okay. You good with that, ma'am? All right. Thank you very much. Well, we got a few cars bought. We didn't get everything bought like I hoped we would, but uh, I think we might be back here before long. And uh, off we go to Birmingham, Alabama now. Uh, a little bit north of there is a little town called Coleman and uh, we've got a pretty solid deal on around six or seven cars if I remember correctly so off we go is it nighttime or daytime I don't even know hey alligator quit fucking around can't just be rolling around in here like an alligator <laughs> <laughs> 